What is going on there? Can we just crash this party? Like, what the? Yeah, let's have, let's, let's stop. Oh, there's kids. No, there's <laughs> stop. kids. Don't yeah. stop. <laughs> I don't know if my parole officer's all right with that. <laughs> My name is Joshua Smith. I'm the executive chef at Bardo Brasserie at the Aria in Las Vegas. The Bardo Brasserie is a Parisian style brasserie. It's really like the top 40 hits of, of French cuisine, like French onion soup and you know steak tartare and roasted bone marrow and steak frites and mussels and fries. You know, we just try to make those staple dishes really, really perfect, like really sing through the technique and the and the you know the consistency. We make this crust for the codfish. It's uh, uh, tons and tons of parsley and garlic, a little bit of Parmesan and butter, and breadcrumbs from our house-made bread. It gets laid out in acetate so that we can cut it to fit the fish, and it forms over the top of the fish as we cook. After just a couple seconds, that piece of acetate shrinks up to a little guy, and then we're able to continue the cooking upstairs. But this, you know, this would translate to cabillaud and persiade, and that's and that's as French as it gets. I think that in Vegas the dining scene is different because the transient nature of, of our audience means that you don't have a chance to really get the trust of your, of your guests as much as you would in a, in a big city with regulars and people that come once a week or twice a month. I was here in Vegas, I was going to school for hotel management and I just like got possessed and one day wanted to be a chef and I told a girl at, at a bar that I was going to be a chef and she was like, you don't know what you're talking about, like have you ever even staged before and I was like, what's a stage? I had no idea what I was talking about and so she kind of like painted that picture for me of how you learn about cooking, you know, by working for free. So I went to uh, a local restaurant. They let me work in their kitchen and, and, and they, they put a lot of pressure on me, but it was like the fast track to learning how to be a line cook. And after just a few months, they offered me a job. I made my way from sous chef to executive sous chef and then to executive chefs. A good friend of mine who was the VP of food and beverage at the time here at the Aria, he came out and spoke to me about this opportunity. It was a really cool move for me to be able to come here and like really develop this concept from the ground up. I named the restaurant. I got to pick the plates and the silverware. The rest is history. So, I, so I, I always kept that like mentality with me that if you just put in your your eight hours, then you know you're really not being paid to learn. You know, but if you come in and put a little bit of extra effort into it, you can really pick up all the secrets of you know being a really successful chef. Cheers, gentlemen. Great night. So last night, my good friend Manny Sofios flew in from Chicago to spend the evening with us. Also went out with Ben Jenkins who's the chef at Michael Mina Bellagio and a long time you know, friend and mentor of mine. I know everything about this is really crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. good. We left Bardo Brasserie and, and went to uh, Other Mama. My roommate, just his, his mom just got married and one of the people he invited from out of town was the guy who gave man. The guy really? stayed at my house for like two weeks because he got stranded. That's, so that's unbelievable. Hung out. So we're going to Other Mama. So this this chef is pretty new in town. The place is pretty pretty recently opened. I can't say enough good things about it. So I've, I've, I've made my sous chefs go. Chef, thanks for thanks for having us, man. Chef Dan Cromer is kind of new in Vegas, the restaurant is really young, but just doing some like really unique, fresh, raw bar, Japanese inspired food. You know, the place is like open air, open kitchen, and they all seem to not take themselves too seriously and they're, they're just really focusing on really great food product. We started out with oysters on the half shell with some unique accompaniments. He did like a rosemary mignonette and you know, this cool kind of pickled habanero condiment. Cheers. 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 You get the same thing I got, the Billy Joe? Yeah. Cool cocktail program. Almost everything on the cocktail program is just like built to be refreshing and kind of light. Got to enjoy an octopus carpaccio that was like crazy tender. All right, this is going to be uni and basil French toast. How oh, wow. fresh and domestic Yum. It's pretty awesome. We did this like crazy flying fish guy that was in a spicy ponzu sauce and butterflied out and fried. <laughs> crazy looking fish, right? This is killer. It's great. 
had these really incredible oysters Rockefeller with foie gras to top them off. This is a live soft shell crab salad. Then he did this like soft shell crab salad that was like a caprese kind of thing. It had salmon roe and like a really unique like tomato and basil kind of a salsa. He brought out a really nice whiskey for some shots and then we, we, we also had some, some mezcal. You know, and he joined us for that. Uh, how'd you come up with the name Mother Mama, man? That was a family thing. And my dad's parents weren't really around too much. My great grandma raised him and all his brothers and sisters. And they always called her Mother Mama. And, like, that's how she was introduced to us as grandkids. I like it. Love this. after Mother Mama got in the car and went to Lotus of Siam. So I, I don't think any Vegas food based anything could be anything without Lotus involved. So that's a, just an institution here. Lotus is in this like crazy shopping center, really, really colorful part of town. It's a big restaurant, they've expanded several times. They're kind of world renowned for being, you know, a, a strong force in Thai cuisine in the, in the country. They do this authentic, regional Thai cuisine. You know, so it's it's not just you know your your basic Thai menu. It's so many different you know unique things. We should get these water glasses for all the mini group restaurants. Right. During <laughs> during EDC especially. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm kind of blown away by this wine. Room. I mean, that's really. Do you have a look at the list at all? There's no beverages on the table but water, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that makes sense. We gotta, we gotta do that. <laughs> the chef, Sai Pin, Shatima, she prepared for us this really unique sausage that had a lot of lemongrass in it, like a Thai style, sort of a rustic sausage. Our mouths were on fire with you know, this tartare that she did. That, you know, it almost looked cooked, it was so marinated, but crazy spicy. It's raw. It's marinated, so it looks cooked, you know? Really? There's, some, there's yeah. some fire in that one. And that guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did a, a fried rice dish with a, a kind of a smoky ham inside of it. Really spicy. She did a spring roll that was off menu. Chef. Chef Dan Cromer was able to, to join us for, for some of that really spicy cuisine. We're not fucking not very hungry anymore. Yeah, you, your free game is a full game. Yeah. <laughs> it was super a full game. Chef, Josh. my name's Josh. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Manny. We got to meet uh, Sai Pin, which is the chef at, at, at Lotus of Siam. How are you? Nice Thank you for coming you. out. Your food is so incredible. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you look like sisters, not like mom. <laughs> <laughs> we got to finish off there with some of my favorite mango sticky rice. You know, really kind of like, it's the, it's the perfect finish to a spicy meal. It's always interesting to me to see like in those ethnic restaurants that like, sometimes it's not like, you know, a young energetic chef like myself, it's like an old lady and her family's there working with her. That's, that's hospitality. They really care about each other and they really care about their guests and they're, you know, they're really there to like present a, a unique experience, you know, it's a place you kind of have to go if you're visiting Vegas. Yeah. Please. After that, we got in the car and we went to Dino's. Dino's! Dino's is my, my absolute favorite dive bar in Vegas. We're gonna take a break, there's a topless cabaret. Opportunity situated. It's always a really colorful crowd and, and really friendly you know, bar staff and really cheap drinks. Gentlemen, <laughs> a lovely evening. Yeah, thanks lovely for uh, hosting and a fun Vegas. and a lovely ending. And thanks for some fantastic food. Yeah. Now we drink. Cheers. Had a bunch of high lifes and you know, did some shots of whiskey and, and you know got to meet up with a bunch of friends that came out to enjoy some drinks with us. I'm going back center. Way back, back center. center. Way back center. I'm thinking it might go uh, back center. De Niro style. <laughs> From Cape Fear, and I think I'm just gonna hang on to the sit on my lap. The fucking car. You at least just sit on my lap. Woo, let's go. Back to Bardo. We were able to bring a bunch of our good friends back here to Bardo and put on kind of a pretty crazy feast we're, for them. We're back.
We did the prime rib patty burger. The, uh, the next move is this like cheese. The cheese is a fondue. We cook down like a reduction of, uh, of white wine with clove and garlic and a little bit of mustard powder. And we add Gruyere and, and Emmental. So then we set that and like let it chill and then we slice that. So it becomes like this like, like American version of, of French cheese. We fried our chickens. There's a lot of flavor developed up in those birds already, but putting them in the fryer just like kind of sealed the deal and made you know, really crispy skin, made them really delicious. So we serve that with like a foie gras rice pilaf that I've been working on. The gravy that we make kind of with the fat that's left in the pan from the foie gras, all that fat gets picked up by the rice and the onions that we cook into that dish. So Madeira and black truffle, kind of a gravy around it, fried eggs on top. Next level. Wow. Next level right here. I'm just gonna eat it from the plate. Do you guys mind? Mmm. Unbelievable. Every day off that I have, I eat out, you know, uh, more often than I ever cook at home. You know, I'm in love with what I do, I love food.